This is Adam L. Humphreys, and now it's time for some embroidery tips and tricks. First, let's uh, prepare the machine to make sure we have optimum performance. So you'll see, uh, have the bobbin thread here, regular 60 weight uh, bobbin thread. You'll notice it's filled up a little bit more than they'd probably like you to. You wanted to, you could uh, unscrew this here and probably move it around a little bit. Mine's not. I, I just use the older machine to, to wind my bobbin thread. But here we have a paper towel in here. And in my other machine, I have a uh, piece of stabilizer, tear away stabilizer. So you're probably wondering why that is there. What that does is it actually gives the bobbin a little bit of tenacity simulated tenacity. So what'll happen if this doesn't have uh, something to kind of keep it in place? Whenever you have this pulling up the thread, it will pull on the bobbin thread, and it'll spin a little bit farther, and what happens is the bobbin thread gets loose. So you will end up with loose stitches on top, and it doesn't look all that good. <laughs> so in case you were wondering why in the world that's there. Now let's, uh, prevent some or just note some things here you'll notice this little hole here you can see that yeah that little hole there and that little hole on the opposite side of there what that is is a path for an optical sensor to determine that oh we're out of bobbin thread now that will not happen with metal bobbins which is why I use metal bobbins usually you will find clear plastic bobbins but notice something else about my bobbins. You'll notice that they are actually flat on one side and curved on the other. The reason for that is to prevent the upper thread from wrapping, accidentally wrapping around the bobbin. As you can imagine, that causes a lot of trouble. Now let's take a look at setting up the hoop. All right, we already have, uh, I guess, the, sta the plastic stabilizer on top. You'll notice there's an edge here. Also, you'll notice what, what uh, kind of stabilizer I'm using here. State of the art, man. State of the art. Uh, even if you don't particularly like that brand, it's still state of the art. On the back, you'll notice how I offset this piece. Uh, these are not pre-cut pieces. I actually cut these, but you'll notice how it's offset to the edge. Where I can, uh, I just, just barely there. Usually, <coughs> what you want to do is you want to place the, your, your stabilizer under the fabric and then kind of align, line it up as best you can under the fabric then it makes it easy enough once this is under the fabric it usually clings to it fairly good on the bottom side and then you can just slide this underneath and then press it into place that usually works well for me I usually do not have to adjust this unless I'm using a different kind of fabric so whatever works for you. And also note again this offset here. We're gonna reuse this. We're gonna embroider. Then we're just gonna take out take out the hoop once we get done embroidering and rip it out. Now I would not recommend this for detailed, uh, really detailed items that have a lot of empty space in it. We're doing a fairly solid portion, so it's easy enough to just rip out. So what we're gonna do afterward, we're gonna actually slide this plastic down and reuse it so we don't have to use yet another piece of plastic, even if it is cheap plastic. And we're also gonna reuse the, uh, the stabilizer again, too. Now we are all just about ready to embroider, except I would like to show you an additional thing. Someone is having an issue, on, they messaged me on DeviantArt, it's working fine, then all of a sudden it tells them that the thread, the upper thread has become undone. To re-thread the upper thread. There's a sensor for that, and I'll show you where that is at right now. First, you'll notice there's just a simple screw here. Just loosen that. I already did. Let's take it off. All right. And this comes off, too. You'll just see that. Just remove that. All right, let's get in there. You see that? Let's see here, let's see this. This little guy. 
There's actually a circuit board behind there with an optical sensor. See that circuit board back there? Unfortunately, you cannot get to it all that easy as I thought earlier. I actually been inside of this thing before. So what you could do is maybe take a piece of thread here. I mean, the problem is, is that I guess the upper thread tension isn't enough or this thing gets hung up to where it doesn't actually come up. However, it doesn't actually look for an oscillation. And what I mean by that, in other words, it's not looking for it going up and down. So you could actually fix it in the up position and it will think there is thread there. But let's take a look. Let's see the error itself. All right, we tell it to go do it and then Uh-oh. Check and re-thread the upper thread. All right. Let's take it and let's thread it. Okay. We have kind of threaded it. Basically, I just stuck it up on top there for now for this demonstration. So now, when we tell it to go, it'll go and it won't sew anything. However, we will not get that error to say, oh, that the thread isn't there, even though we would really like the thread to be there. All right, let's continue. Now we are actually doing some embroidery. I would like to make note, you'll see that arm that keeps pulling up the thread. Uh, on, a, on a rare occasion, the thread will fall off that arm and you will get a whole lot of tangling underneath here. So if you start getting a bunch of tangling, I just simply re-thread your machine and things should be looking pretty good. Basically, it'll just keep widening up underneath and the thread will not be pulling up. So keep that in mind. There's the sensor at work. Here's another trick. If you would like to use huge spools of thread, which is what I like to do, at least with the black and the white, you just set it right behind there, set it right behind the back. Just have it go around the bobbin re-threader. Just go through here and then just wrap it around like you normally would. Now the PE770 is a little bit different. You'd set it right behind here, right back here. But you'd have it the thread go through here. Just kind of fish it through there. Just wrap it around here. And then you would just go through the normal process of wrapping it around all this other stuff. and. Uh, you'll notice I removed this cover. This is actually the thread tension. You can control the thread tension manually if you start having issues with getting, getting too tight or whatever. That was my issue. That's why it's like that. Then uh, here's the cover. One screw. But it has a little catch right here. Um, something else. When you fish the thread through there, make sure this is not fully open. Close it a little, a little bit a little bit or just close it all the way otherwise it will it will get tight here because if if you've ever noticed if your thread even on here with a spool if it catches on anything and the thread gets tight and the, the needle is under pressure it starts bending and then of course it hits the metal and it's gonna break and that's never a good thing never a good thing here we have the next eye ready to embroider you'll notice here the one we embroidered previously the uh, stabilizer out from the edge here, enough of it. Just set it into place. And what we'll do is we'll hold this down while we slip this underneath the stabilizer. We have it pressed down and into place. And you'll notice how nicely it seems to line up on the back here. A nice space, just this little bit here that we won't be using. So we're ready to go. A quick review on catastrophic failure. All right, catastrophic failure number one. Remember the bobbin. I have it flat on one side and it's curved at the top on the other. I used a needle nose pliers to do that with, or you could possibly get away with the, you know, the plastic bobbins are kind of kind of curved. You might be able to find some shorter ones. Reason is to prevent the upper thread from wrapping around the bobbin, which will result in a very bad tangled mess. All right, number two, the thread comes off the pull-up arm here. You will get nasty tangles. All right, number three. 
thread. Just make sure the thread does not get uh, stuck or tied up on something. Otherwise, it'll pull on the needle, the needle will bend, and then eventually it'll come down on the metal and break and probably ruin your design. Possibly that would be bad. Okay, that's it. So we've reused the stabilizer on each side, and here is our completed eye. That's about it. All right. Thank you very much for watching.